God. Anyways, I saw this tweet. Uh, it was from Christmas. It's a few days, but I mean, I couldn't really talk a lot. So, uh, and there's a lot I have to say about this topic. I have a question for FGC. What defines a good character? Moreover, what defines a top tier character? I love that question because there's so many things and so many there's so many types of characters that have been top tier in fighting games, right? So it's like you have to take it game by game, and that is exactly what we're gonna do today. We're gonna talk about the types of um, ways to define a character that is top tier. Uh, the first one was matchup charts. Uh, I don't know if I can find that Guilty Gear Strive matchup chart that I know about. Guilty Gear Strive immune chart. I, there was like a matchup chart that I saw for Strive, and I don't know where it went. Oh god, I don't want to look at Reddit. I think this is it. This is actually it. Perfect. Reddit came through. This is this is legitimately the chart I was looking for. Uh, this is an older chart, so it's not as accurate, right? But um, let's go ahead and take a look. Let's turn off the webcam real quick. Hold up. There we go. So the webcam's off, right? So this matchup chart shows uh, what a character's full rating is, right? How they did against every character in the game, right? This is matchup charts are usually not made by one person. Um, they're made by multiple players. They're made by, uh, I don't know. I would say roughly, roughly like 10 to 15 players, depending on the characters. Hey, what up, Pink Hat? Depending on the amount of characters in the game, right? You look at character specialists and you talk to them about how you feel they do against each character. This was um, after Gold Lewis's launch and when Soul got his first nerfs. Okay, uh, so on a matchup chart, there's one thing you need to know. There will never be a, an even matchup for your character if you're doing the mirror. It just They just put a dash. Right, unless it's Mortal Kombat 9, so we'll talk about that in a special case. Right, otherwise, what you look for, you turn back on the webcam, what you look for is you look for a character with the most winning and the least losing matchup across the board. That is how you define a top tier in one aspect. One aspect of a top tier is literally just looking at their matchups and saying, this character has the highest win rate across the board. You ain't shit true, you're spitting. This character has the highest win rate across the board. This character has the lowest win rate across the board, right? So when we look at this old map, this is sli this is very old. It's not, not the it's not the most recent or the most modern version of a Guilty Gear Strive matchup chart. Uh, fuck a tier list. I think matchup charts are significantly better. May was considered the strongest character post Soul Nerfs. Post Soul Nerfs, after the first Soul Nerfs, May was considered the strongest character in the game. He had one plus four. The only other character who had a higher thing was Axel with a plus five against Gold Lewis. There was no other matchups more negative than that, right? More negative. And other than losing to Soul and Chip, she had one other losing matchup. Soul, on the other hand, had one, two, three losing matchups as well. But for some reason, he was a point behind May. And the reason why he was a point behind May is because Axel lost plus four to her. Friends ain't here yet. You got time to kill. Nice. Yeah. Uh, when you look at Axel versus Soul, it's a minus one, right? So that is one strike against Soul that May did not have. Uh, and it also shows you who the worst characters in the game are. Look at Faust with all zeros and a few pluses, right? He has a plus one against Nago. Unfortunate. A plus one against Zato. Very fortunate. Fuck Zato. <laughs> not a fan of Zato, right? Uh, this matchup chart is a little odd. Uh, and I say that because of the fact that Naga is losing a lot of matchups because I don't believe he loses. But that's before we understood what this character was really about. Uh, I think post Soul Nurse, this was probably already a really strong character. Maybe not among the strongest in the game, maybe not top three, but he was definitely still not in the bottom half of the roster. So it was kind of unfortunate to look at. Anyways, this is one of the ways that you can say that a character is strong, good, or top tier is by looking at match returns. Uh, the other way is they play the game better. Now that's that's a really that's a really bl blanket statement, right? Um, but let's look at a character, for example. Uh, let's look at let's look at a character like. I'm trying to think of two characters who have very similar tool sets, but one's is better than another or better than multiple. So the way that you look at that, I'll just explain it. It's a little harder because I didn't have anything pulled up, unfortunately. What you want to look for is you want to look for a character who does the things that other characters do, but better, right? And that's what we mean by plays the game better, right? Uh, a good example of that, it's simple for me. I look at a character I don't, that beats, beats me over in their top tier. Oh yeah, that's, that's how it works. 
That's that must mean Ice Climbers is top tier because I lose to I lose Ice Climbers every time I play that game. Ice Climbers are top tier in Smash Melee. Anyways, um, so let's look at a character like Mario in Super Smash Bros. Melee. That's a good example. Thanks. Versus a character like Sheik, right? When you look at the way that Mario wants to play and a care and a way that, the way that Sheik wants to play, uh, they're actually really similar. They're very, very similar. And won everything. That doesn't mean Sophie's top tier. I'm not. I'm not talking about the way a player plays. I'm referring to the character. If the character's tools are just leagues and away, leagues by far and away better than other characters' tools, or they cover the same matchups that another character covers but do it better, that is another way to define a top tier character. Right. That is probably the most honest way without having to go through the hoops and valleys of matchup charts. Uh, let's look at the character like. Uh, like Rain in Mortal Kombat 9. Rain in Mortal Kombat 9 is is kind of an underexplored character, right? Now I'll go ahead and explain his general game plan. He mixes you off of flash parries. He has a cancelable string that he can enforce mix-ups off of. I'm sorry, a cancelable special move he can enforce mix-ups off of. And he has very high combo damage that comes from you wanting to press a button through his string. Now let me explain Cabal. Cabal has a flash parry a cancelable move that makes you want to challenge him and he gets huge damage off of one bar and two bar one bar and meterless combos that come from you trying to challenge his minus and or plus frames off of it we're looking at characters tool set compared to others especially when it comes to this part of the conversation yeah right so you could even say in a more modern setting uh you could say a character like boxer a character like balrog in street fighter 5 Balrog and Street Fighter V covered a lot of the same ground that post-nerf Urien covered. Right? Post-nerf Urien. Ner Urien's that mirror. So he still he still had the 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 difference of mirror compared to not having it, right? But when you look at everything else that he had, they kind of have very similar frame data, very same pressure off of their standing medium buttons, and charge attacks, or I should say lunging attacks. I don't mean actual charge attacks. Lunging attacks that cover a large amount of space and are not easy to punish, right? Lunge punch, huh? He has lunge punch. Minus four, huh? Right? It used to be, I think it used to be minus three. And so Boxer just did more than Yurian did at some point in time during Street Fighter V's last time. So that would have made him a better character, a good character, a top tier character. Those are like the two easiest ways to like find a top tier character. I'm sorry, those are the two most honest ways to find a top tier character. The worst is that the character is just absolutely just ruining the fucking game. I'm trying to think of a good example of that. Who has, who in recent memory has just absolutely just ruined a fight? Bayonetta in Super Smash Brothers for Wii U. <laughs> Bayonetta in Super Smash Brothers for Wii U. Now her playstyle was very different from other characters, and maybe she still had some wonky matchups, but the meta was totally shaped around Bayo. Right, all of the top tier characters had to change their playstyles. Bayo saved the game. That's that's cap. Bayo Bayo killed the game. Unfortunately, uh, the the way that she played the game made it you have to play so differently compared to every other character in the game that it, in a sense, dominated the meta. Right, she was the meta. Bayo was a top tier. Right, she commanded so much respect and and like matchup knowledge. And I guess just, I guess, yeah, respect the matchup knowledge that you have to play the game. Meta Knight killed Smash? I'm going to be real with you. I love this. Con that's my favorite conversation to get into when it comes to Smash. Because people always want to say that their, that whatever Smash game they liked the most, their top tier was the worst, right? So what is it? Pyra and Mithra is the best character in Smash Ultimate, right? So it's like, who's, who's more broken? Pyra and Mithra with Searing, with Searing Edge? Bayonetta with fucking Afterburner and Witch Time? Meta Knight with with up air, down air, and tornado. Fox with shine, with literal shine, just shine. I don't think I have to say anything else, right? And and Pikachu with whatever the fuck he wants in Smash 64. Who was really the most broken of the top tiers in Smash? I'm gonna be real. I think it was Meta. I think I think it was Meta Knight. I think it was I think it was Meta Knight. Uh, I'm gonna be honest. Meta Knight was a fucking atrocious. But and there's another good example is the, the meta was shaped around LMO Fox with Shine. <laughs> the, the meta was by far and away shaped around Kirby's Dare Spikes in 64T. Yeah, but Kirby's not 
Kirby's not Pikachu, dude. I'm sorry. Kirby's not Pikachu. <laughs> Kirby's good. Isn't Kirby like number two? Pikachu's number one, right? Oh, it's Kirby number one. Was it Kirby or was it Pikachu? I could have sworn Pikachu was number one. Because he was like almost impossible to edge guard. Had like zero deaths from anywhere on the stage. Had so much fucking hit stun and block stun that you you if you blocked something, you were in a mix up, and if you got hit by something, you were dead. I, I thought he was the best character in the game. It could have been Kirby, I guess. Kirby's really good in 64? Yeah, I thought he was number two. Okay, that was because they were best friends and everyone hated on them, right? But if you look at that, that's a perfect example. Like, that character has seen so many top eights. I'm fairly certain it's Pika. Yeah, I thought so. That's, that character saw so many top eights over her lifetime. Even after, pre and post nerfs that she shaped the meta. When your character shapes the meta, you are probably a top tier. Right? When counterplay has to, when the way that players have to play and counterplay has to come out for your character, for the game to be still enjoyed at somewhat of a competitive level, your character is probably top tier. A great example of that was, hate to bring her up, but uh, Tanya in Mortal Kombat X. <laughs> Tanya in Mortal Kombat X, post, um, post nerfs, right? There was four Tanya players in top eight of CEO 2014, 2015, 2014, 2015. A CEO for Mortal Kombat. There was either four or five Tanyas in top eight and there was three tanya mirrors that were played or four tanya mirrors that were played and i believe the grand finals was tanya versus kung lao or tanya versus tanya it was pretty ridiculous the character had way too many broken things alien a little less so because the meta was so much more wide open at that point i do think that alien was top tier but he didn't like command the same respect hmm shifting the meta because you have to play the matchup in a different way that shifts the the matchup meta, not the meta of the entire game. Isn't that true? Well, it doesn't just shift the way that the matchup is played. It shifts what characters become viable, what characters don't, right? So if you take Fox out of the equation, you take Fox and Marth out of the equation, how many more characters become viable in Melee? How many more? That's what I mean. So those two characters command so much respect that there are, there are certain characters that are just completely pushed out of the meta. That's what I mean. Is yeah, you have to play around them differently. You have to play against them different. But you also just can't pick certain characters into them now. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, like, a good example is Lex Luthor is the only character in recent memory that has a 9-1 matchup. Or even possibly an 0-10 matchup against the character in a fighting game. And that is against General Zod in Injustice 2. And it made that character so hard to play. Lex Luthor. Lex Luthor wasn't even the worst. I don't even think Lex Luthor was the worst character in the game. He was. I think he was, like, bottom three. But there was... There was, there was arguments for the other two for two other characters being worse than him but general zod who wasn't even the best character in the game but he was top five beating his ass so hard that he literally could not play uh it just it just goes to show that there like it pushes a character out of contention of being good because of that this dude didn't know about ivan ooze i might not um let me see if i can show you that i might be able to find that clip just for reference real quick We might be able to find it. This is this is probably what we want to look for. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, I have to turn off the music because the commentators just said something. Commentators just said something and they literally gave it all away. I avoid to try to pick top tier and stick to what's good or almost top tier. I don't do that. I just play whoever I like. If the character happens to be top tier, the character happens to be top tier. I don't give a shit, to be quite honest. Like, I, I don't, if my character sees nerfs, my character sees nerfs. If my character doesn't see nerfs, my character doesn't see nerfs. Let's remove the box so you guys can see what happens here, right? So this is, once again, really low quality. Holy shit, can we change that? Oh God, this is max. This is max quality. Damn. I want you guys to hear what the commentator says right at the beginning of this match. Put your hands in the air and give him your energy. Oh, that's it. That that's was it. Guys, the game's over. That was so ballsy. The game is over. Oh. You guys hear that? It's oh, over. that's it. The that's game it. is over. Well, and indeed, the game is over. Oh, man. It's, and it begins. It's over. No. NRS, please. Oh, God. Oh, my. Look how instant. It's over. Someone call freaking those guys at NRS right now and tell them to watch this shit. This is unbelievable. What is it? It hurts to watch this. It really does. I've seen this happen before in tournaments. It's over. 
right? Like a lot of way to guess wrong, idiot. Yeah, true. So to be fair, to be fair. So what happened was Lex, the Lex Luthor player knew if I do not get in, start a round, and he backdashes and starts throwing projectiles, I cannot get in. Right? I cannot. So what he does is he immediately starts off round with a very punishable but backdash catching move. Puts your hands in the air and he just blocks. He just blocks. And then he does down one into special cancel and just that's it. <laughs> that's the end of the game. It is over. It's over. On a scale of well, and trait keeps him in place now trait is gone but he can just instant air gas blast over and over like cabal would do but very slow very <laughs> slow moving projectiles right and they built so much meter i don't immediately choose what's best i usually play whoever i like but i almost end up liking a character who falls into those oh cool i've played characters that are really bad like green arrow what the fuck is injustice now this is this is the first injustice hey what up machine gun kills this is the first injustice this is injustice one it is an injustice, get it? Because the game's Shut called up. Injustice. Yeah, he literally can't play. The worst matchup. Once he gets straight back, he just puts out trade and pushes him back again. Alright, stream, we have no idea how to commentate this, except it's so instant. If we're, if we're, oh. Yep. Yeah. What do you do? Yeah, guys, like, go take a break. Yeah, I'll come back what do you in do? five minutes. I would suggest you, you, here's what you do. You put your, you put your speakers at the highest. If you stop hearing Zod balls and you start hearing screaming, run back downstairs. Yeah. It's over. Get a drink. This isn't going to and there's the trait, and now you're stuck in trait, and now he can just mix you yeah, from full screen. Go get a snack. You know that that is a nine-one matchup, right? So this pushes. This is what I mean by you have to play around or against the character so differently that they are that they control the meta, right? This guy zones certain characters out so hard that there are certain characters who are just completely unviable because he exists. That's what I mean by they control the meta, right? There are certain characters that ban the shit on so hard, you just could not pick them in tournament because if the opponent had a pocket bail and counter picked you, you just lost. Right? Good examples. I can't think of one that bad in Melee, to be fair. Because no one's going to pick Bowser anyway, right? I can't think of a reason to really pick Bowser. But doesn't Bowser lose pretty hard to, uh, to Sheik and, and um, Sheik and Fox? Like when I say pretty hard, I don't know if it's like 9-1, but it's definitely bad. There isn't? Yeah. Because there's almost no reason to pick those characters, right? Right, so essentially the three things we went over. Bowser Sheik is awful? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The, th the three things you want to look for to define what makes a character good, what makes a character top tier. Is matchup charts. <clears throat> matchup charts. Playing the game better than other characters, including including other high tiers, right? So there can be a high tier who plays the game really well, but their play style is encompassing a character that's better, right? So when you look at a character like, mm, let me let me, when you look at a character like 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 Lucina in Smash Ultimate, right? Smash Ultimate, perfect example of a game with a lot of characters, right? Lucina's archetype. A mid-range brawling with a sword is completely trumped by Sora and by Pyro and Mithra. They just do it better, right? They just significantly do it better. Do not get me started on losing it. She used to be a meta contender character. She's been pushed out of the meta for the most part because of the fact that there are just better swordies who cover the same ranges and have the same kind of speed and space control that she has. <clears throat> just another reason to like Fighter Z. Pretty hard to not be viable there. I don't know about that. There are some pretty viable characters, but at like a base level, like, so what I like to tell people is that viability and matchups and top tiers, low tiers, all that stuff really only matters at the highest levels of play. I've seen someone try to do Zod, Zod versus Lex Luthor at a very casual level and the Lex Luthor player won at, at a very, at a very casual level. But that shit doesn't matter. When I say very casual, I mean, they watch tournaments, they'd compete, they'd go to but they were not super great at the game, but they knew, they knew the competitive footing, they knew, they knew their buttons, they knew how to space, they knew all that stuff. The absolute highest, 100% matter. As a, as a lower, lower tier, anything below like mid-tier gaming, your matchups don't matter. Don't, don't use that as a John for why you just lost, right? But that is an easy way to identify a top tier or good character. Uh, it was way easier to do this in like a video format, Right? Then it was for me to answer this question on Twitter and like quote tweet this guy. But I will like this and retweet it because I think that 
Uh, he deserves it. He has like zero fucking retweets. That's so unfortunate. But we retweeted it. Um, yeah. What defines the top tier in your game? How do you feel about the top tiers in your game? If you're watching this on YouTube, please, please, please feel free to uh, hit subscribe, like the video, comment on it. If I'm rude to you in the comment section, it's because you're a moron. Uh, I've had people straight up like delete their comments from my channel, and I'm not gonna apologize to you guys. Just don't do anything stupid on my channel, and I won't delete. I won't make you so mad, and you get ratio so hard you delete your comment. Uh, feel free to comment, like the video, dislike it if you want to. I can't see the shit anymore. No one can. Uh, and subscribe. I'm hoping to hit 300, uh, 300 subscribers, 500 subscribers maybe, by the end of 2022. See y'all later. Thanks for hanging out. Peace.